There is the Pure Rock Pro 3, there is the Pure Rock 3, pretty, let's say, modest series so far, if you ask me. But what about RGB? Can a bit of shining power make this thing either good enough to make it relevant compared to the competition, or is the lighting strong enough to shred a few bucks off the price tag? This is the Be Quiet Pure Rock 3 LX. Now, if you have already seen the Pure Rock 3 Black review, here is your timestamp. And I'm saying that because almost everything about these coolers is identical. The only difference is the fan. The LX version uses Be Quiet's Lightwing LX fan, a 2000 RPM quick spinning fan that is pushing up to 105.1 CFM at up to 2.51 mm of H2O. And if you compare that to the black edition, that's a bit more air and a bit stronger pushing air, which hopefully results in way better benchmark results and this thing blows anything else away, but yeah, before we get to that, except for the whole IRGB part, the cooler is still pretty black. It's got a black plastic cover topping off the 155mm high black single tower 55 fins heatsink. And similarly to the Pure Rock 3 Black, despite this one being of the same series and sharing almost all of the name, it is not simply the non-pro RGB version of the Pure Rock Pro 3. There are way too many differences between the two to make them easily comparable. And reason number one, at the bottom of the Pure Rock 3 LX, we will find four black copper heat pipes traveling up the 155 mm high tower, which is already too less. But the point is the Pure Rock 3s and the, the black one and the LX got a direct touch base. And that is a big difference. Now, there are similarities. For example, we still got a miniature heatsink covering the, or as much of the top part of the base as possible, which is like a very big quiet thing to do. But due to them having different base styles, it's really not as if you could say one is just the smaller four heat pipe single tower version and the other one just scales up from there. The differences are going to be way bigger and sometimes really not the way you think they are going to be. But before we get to the benchmarks, the Pure Rec 3 LX comes in a very be quiet type of box and includes all the installation hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets. There isn't going to be any thermal paste included in the box, but be quiet pre-applies that one onto the base. To get the Pure Rec 3 LX going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate and shove the Intel screws through the holes, outer grooves for LGA 1851 and 1700, and the inner ones for the older sockets, and then fix them on the other side using the rubber O-rings. After positioning the backplate behind the motherboard, add the space slots followed by the Intel retention brackets, left and right of the socket, arrow pointing towards the CPU, and then screw them down. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets, and from there on, we got a choice. Be Quiet includes retention brackets with and without the special 8mm AMD offset, and not to open a can that has been been opened thousand times before, I've opened it like 50 times maybe. If you're using a Ryzen 5, 7 or 9000, just use the 8mm offset holes. This will center the cooler above the actual heat source and we will later see why that's a blessing. Anyway, add the spacers, retention brackets on top and screw them down. From there on both sockets, snap the cooler on top, screw it down, don't forget the fans. Speaking of which, Similarly to the black edition, we got the new and improved fan clips that are grabbable. Though this is more like a sidestep rather than an upgrade because like Be Quiet was like the only one who wasn't doing it for the last 10 years. But yeah, I digress. This is the LX RGB version. Therefore, we got a 3-pin ARGB plug next to the PVM one, allowing us to control all of the performance-enhancing Unicorn power. Or at least I'm hoping so. Oh, and Be Quiet doesn't include a second fan clip set, which I find ridiculous. They should be doing that. Why the hell aren't they doing that? Now nobody can push-pull this thing, which is really freaking stupid, but yeah, Be Quiet decided it has to be that way. And before we cover the benchmarks and compare this thing to the black one, let's talk compatibility, which is really easy. The cooler is 155mm high overall, and it's a single tower, single fan, so no RAM compatibility issues that could even come up if you like, squeeze your eyes really tight. And yeah, that's it. It's, I told you, it's, it's going to be quick and easy. To benchmark the cooler on Intel, we used our regular test bench using a 3900K and three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. We start up at full blast to see what the cooler can potentially do and then we slowly lower the fan speed in 10% steps while noting down the noise at each step to create a noise to performance curve. Starting off at 120 watts running through the socket, or in other words gaming, there the Be Quiet Pure Rock 3 LX managed to keep the chip at 38.1 degrees C above ambient, which ended up being precise 
precisely the minimum amount that I am rounding my numbers to to still be considered as an improvement over the black edition. Hey, be quiet, you did it, you proved it, RGB does improve performance. Other than this mild accomplishment, it's nothing revolutionary considering it's 2025. Compared to the Pro 3, it's obviously way worse, like the black one makes sense. And similarly to the Black Edition, it fights against similarly sized and equipped coolers like the Hyper 212 Halo and single fan Arctic Freezer 34 eSports. Though both of these are really really old compared to the Pure Rock 3 LX. And the corresponding noise to performance graph for 120 watts looks interesting. Considering the margin of error, it's relatively the same thing as the Pure Rock 3 in black. A bit louder while it's being marginally colder at max, then it's slightly better, then it's slightly worse again, but overall it's pretty much the same thing. And therefore compared to the other coolers we already compared the Black Edition to, it's not too promising. Sure, it wins against the Mugen 5 and Hyper 212, but that, that's really it. Take a last gen Dark Rock 4 or Freezer 36 and that thing doesn't stand a chance. Pushing up the wattage to 250 watts does make things look better. Significantly better if you ask me. At 250 watts the Pure Rock 3 LX kept the chip at 69.4 degrees C above ambient, a 1.2 degrees C improvement over the Black Edition. And here keep in mind that the only thing which has changed was a slightly better performing fan. And that only on paper. On the grand scheme, it might still be at the bottom of the benchmark chart, ignoring all the coolers that didn't, didn't even make the cut at 250, and that's already quite a few, but now we can compare it to things like the Freezer 34 Esports Duo, a dual fan cooler which was pretty iconic and very good for its time, or the Deepcool Assassin 4S, a single fan but dual heatsink cooler. And this is also the point why I decided that this thing deserves a video on its own. A slight improvement, let's say slight improvement, on the fan had a 1.2 degree C difference going from the black one to the RGB one. Which does make me think, what if we improve the fan even further or we add a second fan, which <laughs> comes back to my point, why did Be Quiet not include a second fan clip? That said, compared to the newer Generation Freezer 36, to which I will compare this thing in the end, it still doesn't look particularly promising. And speaking of not particularly promising, the noise to performance line for the Pure Rock 3 LX doesn't look promising either. Sure, it's quite a bit colder at the full blast compared to the regular Pure Rock, and by the way, it's actually on point with a Pure Rock Pro 3 at a reduced fan speed, which I find kind of funny that you, you can actually make these two cross precisely. Anyway, it's slightly louder at max than the Pure Rock 3 Black, we already had that, but once you turn it down, the toll that that takes on performance doesn't compensate for the rest. And therefore, even if the LX is better at max, if you look at the noise across the whole spectrum, it's actually not. It loses almost across the whole line, except for the max moment. And compared to the Freezer 36, yeah, RGB power or not, none of the pure rock standard chance. And now coming to AMD where we benchmark using a 750X3D and we measure the average clock speed across all cores at any given fan speed to get a noise performance graph. Here it's hard to see that the LX even exists, mostly because for some reason Excel doesn't give me the option to choose which color should be on top of the other one, but across the whole spectrum the LX kept almost the identical line as the regular one. The only difference appears here and here. There we should be around 80% fan speed and this should be around 60% fan speed. And at these points the LX did outperform the black one, not by a lot, but it still did. And back to the whole spectrum we see pretty much the same thing we saw in the black edition video. The nickel plated base of the Pro line sucks on an X3D chip. Both the black and RGB LX version outperform it by a measurable margin. The LX a bit more from time to time, but both are pretty close compared to the other coolers that can push it a lot higher. So did RGB improve this cooler? Yes. Like max performance wise, yes, but actually not. Or not always. AMD, yes, minimally, but Intel at 250 watts, I would even say no. Noise to performance wise, no.
That said, the Pure Rock 3 LX suffers exactly the same fate as the Black Edition did, just not as badly. Currently, it's going for $36.97 on a website I haven't seen before with a abysmally bad rating. And the Freezer 36 ARGB A cooler, whose performance is significantly better in every imaginable way. Yes, I know that this is the Black Edition and I don't have the RGB one for an Apple to Apple's comparison. Anyway, that one is going for $38.90, so unlike the Black Edition coolers, in this one very specific case, the Be Quiet Pure Rock 3 LX is actually less expensive, but I still wouldn't take it. Not because it's bad, it's okay for what it is. It's just that for the price of a of a uh, liter and a half bottle of Coca-Cola, I can get significantly better performance in every category across the board. Yeah, it's unfair, but as long as something doesn't outperform the Freezer 36, like in a major way, or somebody somehow offers comparable performance at a lower price tag, it's just hard to get recommended at all. And that's not like for the LX model specifically, it's across the whole Pure Rock line. I mean, none of them are like bad coolers. It's not about that. This one and the black one, for example, might do fine on a Intel 245 or even 245K. The thing is just, they are nothing special. Neither performance or price or even design. I mean, they are very simple. RGB looks good, as good as it can be. And I, I'm fine with that. The thing is just Arctic undercuts or overcuts them in both categories, sometimes simultaneously. And as long as that is true, I mean, yeah, it's just a boring cooler. But okay, this should be everything on the Be Quiet Pure Rock 3 LX. And at this point, a huge thank you to Be Quiet for sending these over. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you want to join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three weeks in advance. Except for the NDA stuff, because, you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to prove once and for all RGB does not equal more performance. I don't care what companies are saying. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the pro version of the pure rock line. It may suck on AMD, but at least it can do something on Intel. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.